This was about what we are as a country, as a culture. That's what was on the ballot. Who are we? What are we? And what we are is hate. We are racism and transphobia and misogyny and classism and xenophobia and fear and cowardice and ignorance and hate. That is what America is at its core. And why the fuck should we be surprised, right? A nation built on genocide, grown rich on slave labor, brutally divided by a persistent racial hierarchy that we still haven't reckoned with. You know, here we stand, peering out from a lofty perch atop the bones of America's victims going, I don't know, I don't see any hate from up here. I mean, I did a whole diatribe last week about, oh, why is it even close? And we all know fucking why. We all know why. It's hate. Right. Some people even called me out about it online. They were like, really, Noah, why is it close? Because fucking racism, because bigotry and white grievance and fear of the other. Trump was all hate. That's all he's ever been from the beginning, from his fucking Mexicans or rapists kickoff to his first campaign. And before that, right to his rising to political prominence by questioning the Americanness of our first black president. And we've stood around with our thumbs up our asses this whole time going, why did, why did people manage to like him despite his hateful rhetoric? Despite? It was never despite the shit he did. The hate was the point. When Kamala started surging in the polls, what did he do? He tripled down on the hate. His ads got more transphobic. His rallies got more racist. His speeches got more violent. He gave America the fuel that powered it since before its inception. He gave it hate. And along the way, he showed every right-wing demagogue to follow him that no amount of viciousness, resentment, or bigotry will ever be too much for the American electorate because viciousness, resentment, and bigotry is what the American electorate is. So where do we even go from here? I mean, as a country, the answer is easy, right? Fascism. Fascism and theocracy. Oppression and repression and regression. But where do we go? Where do those of us who still have dreams of a better nation go? Well, I've got an answer for you, but it's not an answer most of you are going to like. Because the answer is that we fight fire with fire. What we need on our side is more hate. Last time we went through this, these motherfuckers, they told us we needed to open our hearts to these disaffected blue-collar Rush Belt white dudes in flyover country. We needed to listen to their grievances and sympathize with their plight and hum a minor key version of my country tis of thee as they stared forlornly over the boarded-up factories, wiping away a single tear that we shed for the diminishing industrial sector. And where the fuck did that get us? It got us here. It left us kicking away at Lucy's football once again, thinking we'd solve the problem by tackling the issues that supposedly these motherfuckers cared about, right? Kamala ran a campaign about togetherness and inclusiveness and lower taxes and more affordable housing and rebuilding the middle class. All the shit that the Love Thy Neighbor think pieces told us those disaffected Trump voters wanted in 2016. Meanwhile, Trump ran a campaign about hate and he won. That's what they really wanted, no matter what they said out loud. Look, we tried love. It wasn't enough. We didn't love our immigrant neighbors enough to protect them from mass deportations. We didn't love our gay and trans friends enough to close ranks around their rights. We didn't love women or people who rely on Social Security or the air we breathe or the water we drink or our health care or our children or ourselves enough. Obviously, we didn't. Because the way we lost this election was by just not showing up. We called for love and we got apathy. Now it's time to call for hate. And I know some people are going to wince at that and try to give me shit about taking the high road when they take the low road. But that, that whole concept is predicated on the idea that there's some moral core to appeal to in this fight. The better angels of our nature went to war against the worst demons of it on Tuesday and they lost. We need to stop coating this shit with sugar. We need to stop looking at a fucking fascist and seeing Uncle Rob. We need to stop looking at a Nazi and seeing a disaffected voter. We need to stare right into the heart of who and what they are and what they've done to our country and what they're doing to our country. And we need to hate it. 
We need to hate what our country has become and all that empowered it to become that. We need to seethe with anger at every abuse like it was the first one and to hate ourselves for letting it turn into this. Because look, as uncomfortable as it is for me to call for more hate, the absence of hate in this instance is acceptance. And calling for that is even worse. Ceding this nation to the people who perked up at the naked bigotry of Trump's campaign and said, well, there's my man. That's far less palatable than hating them to me. As long as we hate what this country has become, we carry at least a memory of what it promised us it could be, what it still could be. What we could at least steer it back towards if we could muster the rage that we clearly lacked for this election. We need to cultivate our hate. We need to nurture it and grow it and feed it until it blossoms into action. We planted these fields with love once before and they lay barren. So now either we plant something else, something that we know can grow in the native soil, or we wither away.